हमको एक सेलेक्टिव डिले का टाइम पता है तो से क्या है इंटरेस्ट निकालते हैं यूजली वेरी गुड नंबर ऑफ साइनेटिक वेदर योर सर्किट इज मोनोसाइनेटिक और इट इज पॉलिसाइनेटिक थ्रू दिस टाइम यू कैन फाइंड आउट सो फॉर एग्जांपल आप इस स्ट्रेच इफेक्ट से इस स्ट्रेच इफेक्ट इज मोनोसाइनेटिक स्ट्रेच इफेक्ट इंपल्स टू गो टू द एफरेंट न्यूरॉन टू डॉर्सल होम इट टू रिलेट टू द एंटीर होम सेल एंड इफेक्ट ना फाइबर विल कम एंड दे विल कॉज अ कॉन्ट्रैक्शन ऑफ द मसल तो थ्रू दैट टाइम दे वर दे केम टू नो तो दे केम टू दैट कंक्लूजन दैट मोनोसाइनेटिकॉलिसमोलिसमोलिसमोलिसमोलिसमोलिसमोलिसमोलिसमोलिसमोलिसमोलिसमोलिसमोलिसमोलिसमोलिसमोलिसमोलिसमोल
and the subject is aware of it, that will become sensation, okay? And this is your general somatosensory axis. What is happening here? In, there is certain kind of receptors, for example, receptors in the skin and deep in the tissue, receptors in the muscle, like muscle spindle, receptors in your joints, proprioceptors, okay? And these are the receptors in the muscles and these are the mechanoreceptors in the skin. So whenever these are stimulated by certain kind of stimuli, what is stimuli? Anything which changes the environment in the vicinity of that receptor. Okay? Either that environment is external or it is internal. That is stimuli may be of any kind. Okay? Later on we will see it may be mechanical, it may be chemical, it may be electromagnetic like that. Okay? The information will be carried through spinal cord, medulla. Ultimately they will relate to the thalamus and before that there will be some exchange of information with the cerebellum and cerebellum may there will be pre-processing of that information and then finally the information will be going to the somatosensory areas, okay? Posterior to the central sulcus, okay? And this is your general somatosensory axis, we will go in detail of that. What are the somatic sensations? These are the sensations which arise from the somatic structures of the body, that is the skin and the deep tissue. The types may be mechanoseptic sensations that include the most commonly the tactile and the proprioceptive. So tactile, touch, pressure and vibration. Proprioceptive, sense of position and movement, which is sensations are coming from the, you can say from muscle spindle or from around joints. Pain sensations are known as the nociceptive sensation and pain receptors these are known as nociceptors. So when any kind of noxious stimuli or innocuous stimuli, it stimulates that receptor nociceptors, then nociceptive kind of sensations will get elicited. Then there may be thermal sensation, cold and warm. Apart from this, there may be, you can say, chemical sensations, electromagnetic sensations. For example, rod and cones, they are stimulated by light. Olfactory receptors, they are stimulated by some chemical, okay? Or uh, you may categorize into them into either there is conscious sensation or it is unconscious sensation, like that. Now this is your types of receptors present in the skin. For example, fingertip may have to be receptors hote Receptors in the epidermis and the dermis. So free nerve endings are most crude type of receptors, okay? We will go in detail into, into that. Mishna capsules, Merkel cells, Raffini capsules, and Pacinian capsules are deep in the skin. Now, what are the features of the sensory receptors? Sepalici, they act as transducers. Transducers means they will convert the one form of energy into the another form. So basically, your receptors, they may get stimulated by any kind of energy either the mechanical energy or it may be thermal energy, it may be chemical energy. And ultimately, that energy form will be, trans will be converted into electrical impulse. So you are all sensory receptors, they are acting like a transducers. And the structure of that receptor, that is specialized in the sense that that will cause the amplification of that stimuli. So that the electrical impulses are relaying to the brain. Now they react to a particular form of stimuli that is known as adequate stimulus. That stimuli for which the receptor is specific, that stimuli is known as adequate stimulus. So your adequate does not mean only supra threshold. Your adequate also means a specific type of <coughs> stimuli. Your receptors, they are specific for that specific kind of stimuli. Okay, later on we will see that is known as adequate stimulus. The receptors may be either the rapidly adapting or slowly adapting. Okay? What does that mean? Later on we will see, like you are putting on a shirt, your touch receptors get activated. But if your touch receptors are continuously getting activated, what will happen? That will bother you. 
So what is happening there? So nature has designed them so that these touch receptors are rapidly adapting. Initially, they will get stimulated, but later on, there is no continuous stimulation. Okay? So some, re some receptors we need in our body to be rapidly adapted, and for some receptors, we need that continuous information should go to the brain. Brain should get apprised continuously about that kind of stimulus. Then sensory receptors, they are developing the receptor potential. And the receptor potential ultimately will generate the action potential. That's why this receptor potential is also known as generator potential. Okay? And these receptors are of various complexity. Now we will look into that. Now this is your stimulation of receptors by various kind of stimuli. What is happening here? Now this is your Pacinian capsules. They are the connective tissue layer around that Pacinian capsule. And in the center there is a nerve fiber. The tip of nerve fiber is unmyelinated. Okay? And later on it becomes myelinated. So it, myelination starts inside the capsule only. Okay? So it is showing this. Whenever this receptor is stimulated, what happens? So that receptor is basically a stress sensitive channel. So whenever there is a mechanical deformation of this receptor, what will happen? Membrane will get stressed and ion channel will open. It will cause the entry of the sodium ion. Now, this will lead to the development of receptor potential. And the receptor potential that amplitude of the receptor potential, that will depend on the strength of the stimulus. Whenever it is a weak stimulus, receptor potential is less. As you increase the receptor potential, with increasing strength of the stimulus, the amplitude of receptor potential will also increase. And if it is a strong stimulus, receptor potential reaches above threshold, then action potential or the spike potential will fire. Okay? Now, the various kinds of stimuli, they can lead to the gen generation of this receptor potential. Now, what are the complexity range of receptors? Now, you just see here, this is simple neural receptor. So this is the most primitive, you can say, crude type of receptor, free nerve endings. So there is no specialized receptors. The ending of axon itself, they are acting like a receptor. So these are known as free nerve ending. So usually your nociceptors or the pain receptors, these are free nerve ending. Okay? Now important thing here, this is your cell body. You can study anatomy, this is dorsal root ganglia. So dorsal root ganglia is a process that is going to the periphery and one process is going to the center. This is known as pseudo unipolar neuron. So, one process is divided into two parts. Ideally, it should be termed as dendrite. But in your book, it is termed as axon. So, we can, for all particular purpose, we can take it as peripheral axon. But this is your afferent part of this neuron. Okay? Now, this afferent part of neuron, this is acting like a receptor. So, this is simple neural receptors. Free nerve endings are only, they are acting like a receptor. Various kind of stimuli they can cause the stimulation of these nerve endings, okay? In another case, the receptor is a specialized structure. For example, in the Pacinian capsule, so around this nerve fiber, there is a layers of connective tissue, okay? So this is your example of Pacinian capsule, or the pressure-sensitive receptor. So receptor is a specialized structure, okay? So that is another type of receptor. And in your, in your some cases, your cell body or soma can also act like a receptor. For example, in your olfactory system, in your olfactory system, the cell body, they are acting like a receptor. In most of the cases, the axon is a receptor. Okay? Or, receptor may not be the, neither it is axon, nor it is cell body. It's another <laughs> structure that is acting like a receptor. So in the first case, receptor is a part of neuron, Action potential will be triggered if the receptor potential rises above the threshold. In second case, for example, in the special senses, for example, in the auditory system, so these are the hair cells. These hair cells, these are acting like a receptor. 
So these specialized receptor cell, they will release some substance or chemical neurotransmitter, and amount of that neurotransmitter release that is directly proportional to the strength of stimulus. More the strength of the stimulus, more the neurotransmitter will get released, and it will cause the stimulation of this neuron. Clear? So receptor either may be the neuron itself, or it may be the specialized structure, it may be the cell body, or it may be the different structure, like the hair cells in the auditory system, or for example, in the visual system, your rod and cones. Rod and cones are neither axon or cell body. You can say they are type of uh, modified epithelial cell. So they are acting like a receptor. So that is known as complexity range of receptors. So receptor may be of many types. So we are talking about only the, you can say basically the receptors in the sensory system. Otherwise, receptors are classification are going to in the endocrine system depending on the various kind of transduction mechanism. Okay, whether it is G protein coupled receptor, it is intrinsic ion channel, it is enzymatic receptor like that. So the same thing is depicted here. The receptor is the modified ending of efferent neuron and stimulus is there it will cause the opening of voltage gated channels okay? and impulse will get transmitted. In the special sense, the receptor is a separate cell, the stimulus will lead to the release of neurotransmitter and it will lead to the opening of chemical messenger gated channel. So here the channels are usually the voltage gated and here the channels are chemical messenger gated channels. Okay? Now with some facts about various kind of receptors. Pacinian capsule is a present on the hairy and the glabrous skin. But the hairy and non-hairy, both kind of skins, these receptors are present. This is a most sensitive mechanoreceptor. These are rapidly adapting receptors. Rapidly adapting means okay, whenever you cause the mechanical deformation of the outer layer of this corpuscle, what will happen? Initially, the impulse will be transmitted along the nerve fiber. But later on, what will happen? If there is a continuous stimulation of that passive capsule, what will happen? That fluid in that passive capsule, it will get redistributed. And you can say that mechanical, the mechanical deformation was initial part. Mein. Now it ceased to exist now. Now it will get redistributed. So no longer there is mechanical deformation of the tip of the nerve fiber. Although deformation is happening at the outer part of passive capsule, but it is no longer causing the development of the receptor potential. So you can say it is adapted rapidly. Okay? So what does that mean? That adaptation property of that passive capsule, it is because of presence of that concentric layer of connective tissue. So somehow if you remove that concentric layer, so that rapidly adapting receptor that can become the slowly adapting receptor. So that presence of that specialized structure around that tip of nerve fiber that is giving it the property of rapid adaptation. Okay? Now this patient capsules, they are concerned with the perception of pressure. The pressure you can see is a type of sustained touch sensation. And it is also perceiving the high frequency vibrations. Okay? So you have writing hai, Writing my aapke konse receptor stimulate ho raha hai? Passion in capsule, sustained touch, okay? When you are holding the pen. They are found in large numbers in the skin, subcutaneous tissue, mesentery, neighborhood of tendon and joints, okay? You can see here the structure of this passion in capsule. There is a capsule of connective tissue and various lamella which are separated by a gel fluid and inside it there is a unmyelinated nerve fiber tip and later on it becomes myelinated. What is happening here? As soon as mechanical deformation happens, the deformed area happens, so what will happen? It will increase the positivity inside the neuron. There is development of receptor potential and if it is above threshold, then action potential will get generated. 
connection potential will be generated at the first node of Ranvira here. And first node of Ranvira that is usually present inside the capsule only. So mechanical deformation forces here that will cause the generation of receptor potential and further action potential. Okay. This is the transfer section of this specimen capsule. Next is the Meshner capsule. It is also an encapsulated receptor. So now endings are encapsulated. These are the most numerous mechanoreceptors in our body. They are present usually in the non hairy part of the skin, predominantly in the fingertips and the lips. It is also a rapidly adapting type of receptor and is concerned with the low frequency vibration, skin motion, and light pressure. Next are the Merkel's disc. These are present in the dermoepidermal junction of the glabrous skin. They are concerned with the perception of touch or tactile receptors. They also respond to the change in texture, low frequency vibrations, sustained pressure. Now, important thing is that they are having the good spatial resolution. What does that mean? Good spatial resolution. Out of all these mechanoreceptors, these are having the very good spatial resolution. A good spatial resolution, kis sense may help karega? Hmm? 3D structure nahi. Two point discrimination. No, two point discrimination is determined by another factor we will discuss later on. कभी आप लोगों ने blind people को देखा है? Blind people की जो tactile acuity है, it is more. कभी आप लोगों ने वो braille words देखे हैं? The dots of the braille, these are separated by some distance, and that distance is usually constant. They are separated by 2.5 millimeter. So that 2.5 millimeter distance, ठीक है? Between these dots, this is because of presence of these receptors in your fingertips, that is Merkel's disc. So Merkel's discs are having the good spatial resolution. Unka receptive field jo hota, sabse kam hota hai. Whenever th when they are having the very less amount of receptive field, what will happen? When a dot will be touched, so that single, you can say single Merkel's disc will get stimulated. So subject will have maximum tactile acuity. So because these Merkel's discs, they are having the good spatial resolution. So they are particularly helpful in the tactile equity for the braille okay? that is helpful in the blind people you can say Merkel's disc jo impulse transmission hai, that is a kind of high fidelity representation of the these dots okay? or these Merkel cells on the which are present on the skin next is the roughness and organs they are also encapsulated endings of Myelinated A delta or unmyelinated C group of fibers. They are also responsible for grip holding or they are sensing the sustained pressure. They are usually found in the dermis and they are slowly adapting type of receptors. Okay. So cones are rapidly adapting the Pacinian capsules and Mishner capsules. Okay. By Merkel's disc and Raffini end organs, these are slowly adapting. अगर मान लिया मर्कल जिस आपके रैपिडली डेप्टिंग होंगे तो क्या होगा ब्लाइंड पीपल के लिए फिर हेल्पफुल ही नहीं होगा तो इट इज नीडेड दैट दैट सब्जेक्ट शुड कंटिन्यूअसली गेट स्टिमुलेशन दैट्स व्हाई दी रिसेप्टर्स आर स्लोली अडेप्टिंग दे आर हैविंग द गुड स्पेशल रिजोल्यूशन सो दे आर हेल्पफुल इन दोज पीपल नो फ्री नाव एंडिंग्स दे आर रेस्पॉन्सिबल मेनली फॉर द रिसेप्शन ऑफ द पेन नोजीसेप्शन so all the nose receptors, these are free nerve endings. Apart from that, some other sensations like crude touch, pressure, tickle sensations, and cold and heat. In receptors of all these sensations are also a type of free nerve ending. Okay? Now free nerve endings, now if there is associated tissue damage around the free nerve ending. Now this free nerve ending, the excitability of these free nerve ending, it is subjected to the neighboring interference 
whenever there is associated tissue damage the excitability of these receptor it will increase that means apart from the stimuli if there is tissue damage also then these receptors are maximally stimulated okay for example if there is any kind of injury along with the stimulus then your pain perception will be more so you can say pain stimulation may be due to any kind of stimuli either severe mechanical deformation or extremes of temperature or application of any noxious chemical stimuli so these various kind of stimuli they can cause the stimulation of these free nerve ending and they are responsible for perception of pain so pain from separate class language is very important aspect of your sensory system now next thing is a receptive field what is receptive field receptive field of a sensory unit is the spatial distribution from which a stimulus produces a response in that unit so your area over that skin surface so that is responsible for the transmission of impulse in a single afferent neuron that is termed as receptive field to so, ek sensory unit ka receptive field kya hoga aapka ki agar aapka ek afferent neuron mein impulse transmit ho rahi hai to uske liye kon kitna area responsible hai aapka skin ke upar that is a receptive field for that afferent neuron so, it will depend on branching of the afferent fiber it will also be dependent on the variation of the you can say regional variation of your skin ki these receptive field will be different in the different areas of the skin later on we will see for example two point discrimination two point discrimination is not similar at at every area of the skin different areas in the skin they are having different acuity of two point discrimination because they are having the different number of branching of the afferent nerve fiber and they are having the different number of receptors now the receptive field this is the reflection of somatic acuity okay so you can say for example tactile acuity so tactile acuity ka reflection hai receptive field for example in the merkel's disc merkel disc the receptive field was small smaller the receptive field more will be the tactile acuity more will be the somatic acuity and is important for two point discrimination we will see now you just pay attention to this thing now these are three receptive field now this is the receptive field of a neuron this is the receptive field for b neuron and this is the receptive field for c neuron now what information are you getting we have touched the skin by two stimuli simultaneous application of two closely related two closely situated stimuli whether they will be perceived as two point or single point now in first case these two objects are just separated by this much distance for example two green dots in second case two objects they are separated by this much distance two red dots in third case two objects are separated by this much distance two blue dots in these three cases this is the impulse traffic in these three neurons a b and c so what information are you getting very good okay ek ek information unhone batayi clear for example this is the receptor field for a neuron so sabse pehli cheez kya hai ki whenever the stimulus is given in the center of the receptive field there is a maximum transmission and that afferent neuron pehli cheez clear ki if the center of the receptive field is stimulated there will be the transmission and if the stimulate in the periphery of the receptive field there will not be much transmission ek cheez clear very good second thing mediation ho raha hai sir agar periphery pe hai to uska relative flow matlab in ho jayega impulse jayega aur reduce impulse theek hai ek to aapka jo lateral inhibition hai wo hota hai ki whenever the impulse is traveling it will cause the 
लेटरल इनिबिशन लेटरल इनिबिशन का फायदा क्या होता है कि इट विल कॉज द शार्पनिंग ऑफ द सिग्नल कि वैन एवर सिग्नल इज ट्रांसमिटिंग इन ए एफरेंट नव नव फाइबर तो नेबरिंग एफरेंट न्यूरोन्स जो होंगे उसमें आपका ट्रांसमिशन स्लो हो जाएगा इट विल गेट रिड्यूस तो एक तो वो हो रहा है और इंपॉर्टेंट चीज़ क्या अगर आपसे पूछे हम टू पॉइंट डिस्क्रिमिनेशन मैक्सिमम किस केस में है ग्रीन वाले केस में रेड वाले केस में या ब्लू वाले केस में मैक्सिमम टू पॉइंट डिस्क्रिमिनेशन इज इन द ब्लू वाले केस में वाय ओके क्लियर आपको तो फर्स्ट केस में क्या हो रहा है सी डाउन यू कैन सी हियर कि वेन एवर टू टू डॉट्स आर सिचुएटेड हियर तो यू कैन सी दिस डॉट इज इन द पेरीफ्री ऑफ ए रिसेप्टिव फील्ड ओनली इज स्मॉल अमाउंट ऑफ स्पाइक रेट बी में क्या हो रहा है दिस बोथ द डॉट्स आर इन द सेंटर ऑफ द रिसेप्टिव फील्ड ऑफ द बी न्यूरोन यू कैन से मैक्सिमम स्पाइक रेट इन द ग्रीन हियर Here, second dot you are. This is in the periphery of the C neuron receptive field. Again, the spike rate is less. In second case, two red dots. This is near to the center. Okay, so the spike rate is more than the green one. Similarly, here, the spike rate is more than the green one. Now, these both these red dots, they are falling in the receptive field of the B neuron. The maximum transmission in the B neuron. In third case, this blue dot it is in the center of the receptive field of A neuron. Maximum transmission here. Here, this is in the center of the receptive field of C neuron. Maximum transmission. Now, but in case of B, both these dots are falling in the edge of that receptive field. So there is least transmission here. So that's why maximum impulse traffic is occurring in the A neuron and C neuron. The brain will perceive only this case, blue dots, as the two objects. The two closely situated object will be perceived as distinct one only in case of blue case. ठीक है? कि whenever these two dots are in the center of the receptive field. Now this distance between dots that will be dependent on the different regions. Okay? It will be least in the fingertips. ठीक है अगर थोड़ा सा इधर आए हम और अक्सिमली तो इट विल बी मोर हियर इन द एट द रिस्ट तो दिस इज वन केस नाउ दिस इज केस फॉर योर एफरेंट न्यूरोन नाउ दिस आर द रिसेप्टिव फील्ड फॉर रिसेप्टिव फील्ड फॉर प्राइमरी सेंसरी न्यूरोन जो आपका फर्स्ट सेंसरी न्यूरोन जा रहा है ठीक है ना नाउ दिस थिंग इज कॉम्प्लिकेटेड फर्दर इन अवर बॉडी बाई अनदर फिनोमिना दैट इज लेटर वी विल सी ये तो क्लियर हो गया आपको कि अगर टू पॉइंट्स आपके परसीव हैं तो दे आर परसीव एस टू पॉइंट ओनली बिकॉज दिस टू डॉट्स और टू ऑब्जेक्ट्स आर फॉलोइंग इन द सेपरेट रिसेप्टिव फील्ड हियर दिस टू डॉट्स और टू स्टिमुलाई दे आर फॉलोइंग इन द सिंगल रिसेप्टिव फील्ड तो इट विल बी परसीव एज सिंगल पॉइंट ठीक है बट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इट इज कॉम्प्लिकेशन फर्दर अकर्स ड्यू टू distance i have already told you this is for example maximum distance is at the back theek hai so here you can say more than 60 mm so this much distance is required to perceived as two point while only 2 to 4 mm is required to perceived as two point in case of fingertips and lips okay so these are having the maximum propensity to develop the uh, to cause the perception of two point discrimination the so same thing here if distance is less than 1 mm only a single afferent neuron will get stimulated there will be a one point discrimination if distance is more than 1 mm and if there is stimulation of two afferent neuron there will be two point discrimination now this distance is more at the back because there is very few number of units here you can see here the units this sensory units are closely situated here and the sensory units are at much distance with each other so here if distance is less than 30 mm it will be perceived as one point discrimination 
And if it is more than 70 millimeter, it will be clearly demarcated as two-point discrimination. Now, this was case about the receptive field for primary sensory neuron. Another thing occurs that the, these primary sensory neuron, they converge to the secondary sensory neuron. Now, you just pay your attention here. Now, these are the receptive field for primary sensory neuron, efferent neuron that we were talking about. Now, all these primary efferent neuron, they will further converge on the secondary neuron. So, this hole will be the receptive field for this neuron, secondary neuron. The many primary sensory neurons, they converge onto a single secondary neuron and that creates a very large receptive field. The two stimuli will be perceived as single point because both the stimuli are falling within the same receptive field. You can see here, that in the first case, it will be perceived as two point. But it also depends on your convergence in your neural circuitry. If all these neurons, they are converging into a single secondary neuron, then it will still be perceived as single point. Only one signal will go to the brain. In another case, you can see here, when fewer neurons, they converge, secondary receptive fields are much smaller, and the two stimuli, they will activate the separate pathway, and they are perceived as distinct stimuli. So you can see here, here all these primary efferent neurons, they were converging onto single secondary neuron. And here you can see here, there are more number of secondary neuron. So receptive field for this secondary neuron is much smaller compared to the primary neuron. In this case, two signals are going to the brain. So for two-point discrimination, convergence, if convergence is more, two-point discrimination will be less. If convergence is less, two-point discrimination will be more. So what are the factors on which two-point discrimination depends on? It depends on... Now, this two-point discrimination or tactile localization, it is more on the extremities than on the proximal part. We have say, seen that it is more on the fingertips and lips rather than on the back. It depends on, first thing, greater number of receptors. On your fingertips or on your distal part or extremities, the number of receptors are more. Second thing, greater number of efferent. The number of efferent fibers are more on the extremities compared to the proximal part, okay? So that's why maximum propensity for that. Third thing, little convergence of efferents centrally, okay? Convergence is the kam hoga, utna jada, two point discrimination hoga. Next thing is the, another important entity is a wide area of cortical representation, good analysis and interpretation. Later on we will see in the sensory homunculus, in different areas of your body, they are allotted different amount of areas in the somatosensory cortex. So for your extremities like fingertips, there is a larger amount of area that is given in the cortical circuitry, okay? So more the area, more the representation of that body part in the cortex, more will be the, you can say, tendency for two-point discrimination. Clear? Now next topic is your sensory coding. What is sensory coding? कि जो भी आपकी sensation है, उस सिक्योरिटी जो sensation को body perceive कर रही है, कि initially it was only sensory stimuli that converted to sensory information and ultimately to the level of perception. तो ये sensory system it codes for these four four attribute of the stimulus. High stimulus में these these are the four elementary attributes which are responsible for sensory coding. One is your modality, another is your location, third is your intensity, and fourth is your duration, adaptation. So in the modality, important part is your adequate stimulus. Adequate stimulus kya hota hai? I have told you that every receptor it is having sensitivity to the specific type of stimuli. That stimuli is adequate for that receptor. That is specific for that receptor. That is known as adequate stimulus. For example, here, adequate stimulus is the physical energy to which a receptor is most tuned. For example, in case of eye, 
light will be the adequate stimulus ear sound will be the adequate stimulus touch ke liye mechanical deformation muscle spindle ke liye changes in the muscle length and golgi tendon organ ke liye changes in the muscle tension so these are the adequate stimulus for the kind of receptors although the receptors may get stimulated by other kind of stimuli that may not be adequate or specific theek hai jaise aap logo ne filmo mein dekha hoga hai na ki mechanical blow on the head sound sunai deti hai sunai deti hai iska matlab kya hai if you give the heavy mechanical blow on the head it can also lead to the stimulation of auditory receptor but threshold for that stimuli it is much more than the sound energy theek hai वैसे जैसे आपका जो फोटो रिसेप्टर्स हैं दे आर स्टिमुलेटेड बाय लाइट लाइट स्टिमुलाई ठीक है लेकिन अगर आप हैवी मैकेनिकल प्रेशर दे दें यहाँ पर समटाइम्स आल्सो दीज फोटो रिसेप्टर्स गेट स्टिमुलेटेड योर फ्लैश ऑफ लाइट परसेप्शन हैपन्स ठीक है बट दैट स्टिमुलाई इज नॉट एडिक्यूएट और नॉट स्पेसिफिक फॉर दैट रिसेप्टर ठीक है तो दैट मीन्स एवरी रिसेप्टर इट इज स्पेसिफिक फॉर स्पेसिफिक काइंड ऑफ स्टिमुलाई ओके दिस इज यूर क्रॉस सेक्शनल एरिया ऑफ सोमेटो सेंसरी कॉर्टेक्स एट द लेवल ऑफ पोस्ट सेंट्रल गायरस एनाटमी पड़ा होगा ये क्या पता चलता है इससे एनी वन ओके वेरी गुड सी डाउन तो पहले जो टेक्टाइल लोकलाइजेशन है कि जो रिसेप्टर से इन्फॉर्मेशन जा रही है टेक्टाइल लोकलाइजेशन बॉडी कैसे पता लगाती है वे आर दैट सर्किट इज फाइनली रिलेइंग इन योर ब्रेन ठीक है तो यू आर डिफरेंट एरियाज इन योर ब्रेन दे आर हैविंग द लोकलाइजेशन फॉर डिफरेंट एरियाज ऑफ द स्किन एंड दैट अलॉटमेंट ऑफ एरिया दैट इज डिफरेंट फॉर द डिफरेंट पार्ट ऑफ द बॉडी मैक्सिमम इज फॉर यू कैन से फॉर लिप्स फेस ठीक है एंड लीस्ट फॉर यूर ट्रंक एंड द लोअर पार्ट ऑफ द बॉडी ठीक है तो अगर हम देखें तो आपका दिस विल बी योर मिडियल पार्ट दिस विल बी योर लेटरल पार्ट तो अपर पार्ट ऑफ बॉडी इट इज रिप्रेजेंटेड इन द कॉर्टेक्स मोस्ट लेटरली वाइल्ड लोअर पार्ट ऑफ द बॉडी इट इज रिप्रेजेंटेड मोस्ट मीडियली दिस इज नोन एज सेंसरी होमनिकुलस और द लिटिल मैन इन योर ब्रेन now that little man in your brain the body parts are not proportionate or as uniform as normally should happen but it is bit you can say it is a bit distorted man the distortion is because different areas in your brain they are given the different circuitry for example agar aapka ye wala lips wala region hai theek hai to this much area that is allotted for lips region का मतलब क्या है कि दैट कॉर्टिकल सर्किटरी फॉर दिस रीजन इज मैक्सिमम तो योर नंबर ऑफ रिसेप्टर्स नंबर ऑफ एफरेंट न्यूरोन नंबर ऑफ योर यू कैन से सेकेंडरी एंड टर्शरी न्यूरोन योर ब्रेन दीज आर मैक्सिमम इन दीज रीजन ठीक है ऑब्वियसली बिकॉज दीज रीजन योर डिजिटल एक्सट्रीमिटीज दीज आर रिक्वायर्ड फॉर द फाइन मैनिकुलेशन ऑफ द ऑब्जेक्ट जो आपके टूल्स है आपका सिविलाइजेशन में टूल्स का स्किल्ड यूज करने के लिए क्या होना चाहिए जो डिजिटल पार्ट ऑफ योर बॉडी है जो एक्सट्रीमिटीज हैं there should be allotted the maximum amount of area that's why that your brain can perform more efficiently so depending on the requirement of your body for the different kind of work theek hai the different areas have been allotted in your somatosensory cortex okay later on we will see the your next discussion in the next class okay thank you any query or doubt you can ask टेनिस ले लो
we had done the layers of the abdominal wall yes can any one of you stand up and tell me the layers of the abdominal wall and we are talking of anterior abdominal wall okay we are anterior and then posterior abdominal wall posterior side to the wall hai lekin abhi hum sirf anterior abdominal wall ki baat kar rahe hain okay yes stand up Okay, 
has to pierce through this peritoneal membrane. So urethra is going to pierce out. Yes, vaginal opening is going to pierce this. Has to come out. Then the penile structure has to pierce this membrane and come out. Okay, when these organs are coming out, they carry some coverings of what? They are going to carry some coverings because we know chest is there for where the posterior bone wall. Okay, and when they are going to descend down, descend down through the abdominal cavity and come out and pierce the peritoneal membrane and come out, they are going to carry some coverings along with this. Clear? बस अभी इतना समझ आ गया तो ये पहले इनलेट है ये पहले इनलेट है ओके एंड दिस इज दी आर दिस इज दी पहले कैविटी इट इज पहले विस्लाइज लाइन एंड एंटीरियर ये इज दी पेरिटल मेम्ब्रेन ओके एंड दिस पेरिटल मेम्ब्रेन का जो पोस्टीरियर बॉर्डर इज थ्री इन दी सेंटर ऑफ द पोस्टीरियर बॉर्डर इज दी पेरिटल बॉडी लाइन बाकी पहले डायफ्राम है और पेरिनियम तो बहुत ही पेरिनियम पाउच इज दैट वी टेकिंग केयर इन दी पेरिनियम ना वी स्टार्ट विद दिस You were told that first is the skin. Skin will be continuous above and below. Yes, beneath the skin is the superficial fascia. This superficial fascia is modified in two forms. That is the superficial fascia. If I do that, then it will be superficial. Then this is the superficial fatty layer, deep membranous layer. Superficial fatty layer is again going to become continuous with this organ. This visceral which are going to come out, so superficial <coughs> fascia or superficial fatty layer is going to become continuous with this scrotum. Superficial fascia of this scrotum in males and then again going to become continuous with the superficial fascia of the penis up to the colon. Okay, okay. okay. Then it becomes continuous with the superficial fascia. Clear? Okay. okay. In females it is going to become continuous with the round ligament of the uterus. Okay. Then this is the superficial fascia. Then deep membranous layer. This deep membranous layer again, it is going to lie in this. So any structure which is any structure which is going to come from the posterior abdominal wall and come through this abdominal cavity and come to lie in this area will carry this deep membranous layer also. Okay, that deep membranous layer will be again present in this border. This this is the membranous layer. This blue thing is the membranous layer. This yellow is the fatty layer. Okay. Then we can see here this yellow uh, fatty layer is continuous with the scrotum and the penis. Okay. Clear. But in this scrotum, what happens? This fatty layer becomes replaced by some muscle that is called as the varicose muscle. So this superficial fatty layer becomes replaced by a muscle that is called as the varicose muscle. Okay. Now coming to this membranous layer. This membranous layer is again coming on to the scrotum. And coming, uh, becoming continuous with the deep fascia of the scrotum and deep fascia of the penis. And this deep fascia around the penis is called as the podes fascia. Yeah. <laughs> 
So now this uh, will be supplied. Anterior abdominal wall will be having some nerve supply. Okay, cutaneous innervation, and we'll have some blood supply. We will talk of the nerve supply. A nerve supply in the midline will be supplied by anterior cutaneous branches from lower six, lower six, lower six thoracic nerves. Okay, and उसमें से जो lower five होंगी, they will be intercostal nerves, branches from the intercostal nerves, और जो lower वाला होगा, सबसे lower most fifth, that will be that will be subcostal. Okay, because T12 को हम specifically call it as subcostal nerve, and बाकी यार intercostal. This is also intercostal, but we call it as subcostal nerve क्योंकि lower margin से जा रही है of the twelfth. Then any other nerve? Ilio hypogastric and ilio inguinal nerve. Ilio hypogastric and ilio inguinal nerve. They are going to supply this area. Cutaneous innervation to this area. This is the ilio hypogastric and this is the ilio inguinal. Ilio inguinal nerve is going to come in the perineum through by passing through the inguinal canal. We'll discuss. It is going to come out through the superficial inguinal ring in this area. कैसे बनेगी? We'll discuss. So these, this is the innervation, cutaneous innervation that is by the anterior cutaneous branches from T7 to T12. जिसमें कि T6 इंटरकोस्टल है सारी की सारी अपर सिक्स एंड दिस इज द लोअर वन इज द सबकोस्टल नर्व क्लियर एंड देन देर इज इलियो हाइपोगैस्ट्रिक एंड इलियो इंग्वाइनल दोनों की रूट वैल्यू क्या है L1 है एंड डर्मेटोमल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन आल्सो तीन डर्मेटोमल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन इज इंपॉर्टेंट दैट दिस टी सेगमेंट टी सेवन सेगमेंट इज सप्लाइंग दी एपीगैस्ट्रियम ओके टी सेवन सेगमेंट डर्मेटोमल सेगमेंट इज सप्लाइंग अराउंड द एरिया अराउंड दी Epigastrium area around the abdominis is supplied by T10 thoracic segment. Okay, and then the area around this line where the anterior uh, where a line passing through the uh, li imaginary line is uh, drawn passing through two anterior superior iliac spines. ठीक है ये वाला. So this will be supplied by what? This will be supplied by 12, and this will be supplied by L1. More specifically, we talk of T10. And T7, T7 epigastrium, because epigastrium pain is most common. And then second is T10. Okay, that is around the umbilicus. Umbilicus is also again important because we talk of uh, umbilical port, uh, this caput medice in case of portal hypertension. Oh, so, okay. So that's why this dermatobal distribution again becomes important. And we can see that these dermatome, when we have drawn, we have drawn them horizontally. Okay, horizontally. Okay. And we also say the lines of cleavage. Okay, lines of cleavage. You all know. Which are present? They are fine lines which are present on the skin. 
can be appreciated when we are when they are seen very minutely with the microscope you can appreciate or when you uh, see very closely you can appreciate these horizontal lines present in the abdomen what is the significance of these line of cleavage yes okay when uh, the incision is given along this line the he, at the time of healing scar is minimal okay the scar is minimal why because the collagen fibers are oriented in this direction only in the abdomen and we when these fibers are oriented in this direction and we are just approximating them then what happens the scar is not produced too much a scar zyada nahi hoga so there will be good approximation theek hai so that's why we say the if uh, incision or uh, to be given it has to be given parallel to these lines clear then muscles of the anterior abdominal wall you all know sabse bahar there is an external oblique muscle okay uh, sabse outside is external then internal then transversus abdominis then rectus abdominis cream aster and pyramidalis if i ask you to enumerate the muscles of anterior abdominal wall you should be naming all these so teen to oblique ho gayi kaun kaun si external oh, sorry do oblique ho gayi external and the internal oblique and then the transversus abdominis then midline mein baat ki thi rectus abdominis abhi humne uh, cream aster ki baat nahi ki hai cream aster we will talk of and then one, another muscle in the center is the pyramidalis choti si muscle hai we'll talk of that again now coming on to the external oblique external oblique ye sara these are the fibers of the external oblique so how it is originating this external oblique is originating from the, these areas that is the outer surface of of lower eight ribs okay it is uh, going to take origin from the outer surface of the lower eight ribs clear again it is going to originate from the some part from the lumbar fascia ओके तो जब ऐसे ओरिजिनेट कर रहा है फ्रॉम द आउटर सर्फेस ऑफ अपर एट रिब्स द फाइबर्स विल बी डायरेक्टेड डाउनवर्ड्स एंड फॉरवर्ड्स ओके दीज फाइबर्स आर डायरेक्टेड डाउनवर्ड्स एंड फॉरवर्ड्स सो इट इज टेकिंग ओरिजिन फ्रॉम द आउटर सर्फेस ऑफ अ लोअर एट रिब्स इट इज ऑल्सो ओरिजिनेटिंग फ्रॉम द लंबर फेशिया ओके ventral टू थर्ड सेगमेंट एंड डॉर्सल वन थर्ड सेगमेंट जब तुम नीचे जाके आइए क्रेस को अप्रिशिएट करोगे यू विल सी कि वेंट्रल जो सेगमेंट है वेंट्रल सेगमेंट वेंट्रल टू थर्ड सेगमेंट जिसकी हम बात करें इट इज गोइंग टू हैव एन आउटर लिप इट विल हैव एन इनर लिप एंड हैव एन इंटरमीडिएट एरिया लेकिन जो पोस्टीरियर वन थर्ड सेगमेंट की बात करेंगे दैट इज हैविंग आउटर स्लोपिंग एंड द इनर स्लोपिंग एंड बीच में क्रेस्ट लाइक स्ट्रक्चर इज प्रेजेंट ओके तो ऑन दैट बेसिस वी हैव सेड दिस इज द वेंट्रल टू थर्ड and this is the dorsal one third okay external oblique takes origin from the outer lip from the outer lip of whole of these ventral segment pura ka pura is ventral segment se it takes origin clear <coughs> yes so this is the external oblique this ventral segment is again divided ye jo ventral two third segment hai bataya hai is again divided into anterior two third and posterior one third okay anterior two third and posterior one third So posterior one third, you may say it is not going to originate. It is going to originate from anterior two third of the ventral segment of iliac crest. ठीक है? Anterior two third of the ventral segment of the iliac crest. If you want to specifically tell us why, because posterior में there is something else present. और दोनों के बीच में there is an area that is called as lumbar triangle of Petit. Okay, that is the lumbar triangle of Petit. So outer lip of iliac crest. anterior two third of ventral segment clear sabse bahar wali muscle hai to sabse bahar se aayegi bahar is this outer lip of iliac crest theek hai outer lip of iliac crest wo jo outer lip of iliac crest hai uske ventral segment ke anterior two third se uske ventral segment ke anterior two third se this is going to origin okay all these fibers when they are going to originate from these ribs and this iliac crest they are going to go in midline downwards and forwards in the midline they are going to again originate some fibers from the xiphoid process and then they are going to get inserted into linea alba linea alba kya hai is a midline where the fibers are going to interdigitate muscle fibers of the anterior abdominal wall are going to interdigitate so it is going to get inserted into linea alba it is again going to get inserted where onto the pubic symphysis okay pubic symphysis okay and then pubic symphysis is if you are going to go laterally what is present pubic crest pubic crest okay so it will be attached to the pubic crest also yahan par i'll tell you pubic symphysis and pubic crest 
okay so these muscle fibers they are originating where from all these areas it is outer surface of up lower eight ribs and it is going to originate yahan se from the iliac crest outer lip of the iliac crest at the level of at the level of linea semilunaris linea semilunaris kya hai is the line which is imaginary line which is going to separate the rectus abdominis from the other oblique muscles other muscles of the abdomen or you can say other lateral muscles of the abdomen this these muscle fibers become aponeurotic at the level of linea semilunaris yahi linea semilunaris hai theek hai at this point or along this line these fleshy fibers abhi tak to fleshy fibers the these fleshy fibers are become uh, are going to become tendinous and they are going to form a flattened tendon <laughs> सोना नहीं है बच्चे यस यू तुम्हारे आगे 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 ये होता है ना बच्चे तुम्हारे आगे एक्सटर्नल ओब्लिक का क्या क्या डिस्कस किया हमने कहा से ओरिजिन करती है प्लीज 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 Is she correct? Origin कहा से होगा बच्चे एक्चुअली ओरिजिन इज इम्पो आउटर बॉर्डर ऑफ ड्रिप्स का आउटर बॉर्डर होता है आउटर सरफेस देन आउटर सरफेस ऑफ यहां से ओरिजिन है सिर्फ यहीं से ओरिजिन है तो ये तो बहुत डिसकंटिन्यूस ओरिजिन हो जाएगा सिर्फ यहीं से ओरिजिन है यू आर से बाकी ये कहां से आ रहा है ये वाला सेगमेंट रह गया ना बाय आई एम टेलिंग यू ऑल दीज थिंग्स ये तो ये क्रेस वाला ये है बच्चे ये क्रेस ओरिजिन ये हो रहा है ये वाला पार्ट रहेगा ये भी कहीं से आना है ना कहां से ओरिजिनेट करेगा इसीलिए आई एम सेइंग रिपीटेडली सेइंग लंबर फेशिया लंबर फेशिया सम फाइबर्स आर गोइंग टू ओरिजिनेट फ्रॉम द लंबर फेशिया हर एक वर्ड का इंपॉर्टेंस है वो तभी समझ आएगा जब सुनने की कोशिश की जाएगी ठीक है बच्चे सिट डाउन सो ना दिस इज द ओरिजिन एंड इंसर्शन कहां चला गया दीज फाइबर्स आर गोइंग टू गेट इंसर्टेड इनटू द रिफॉइड प्रोसेस लीनिया एल्बा and then here linea alba ke baad it is going to get inserted yahan par that is the pubic symphysis pubic symphysis se laterally jab aayega that that will be area of pubic tubercle sirf pubic tubercle tak i am talking about so and i told you these fleshy fibers are going to become aponeurotic at the level of the linea along the line of the linea semilunaris they are going to become aponeurotic aponeurotic isliye dekho hamesha when you are going to see the anterior abdominal wall you are going to appreciate the fleshy fibers laterally and white structure in the center yes Why? Because they are going to, they have to form some sheath here. That sheath has to cover this muscle. That is the rectus abdominis. And this rectus abdominis, you can see, is rarely visible. Why? Because it is being covered by the aponeurosis of these muscles. How do we discuss? So now we know that this external oblique is going to get inserted in this manner. Now, upper, we know. Posterior end, we know. Midline, we know. Now, at the lower end, at the lower end. We have talked that यहाँ तक anterior superior iliac spine तक it has taken origin from the iliac crest and it has got attached to the pubic tubercle. At the lower end, what happens? These aponeurotic fibers, ये जो aponeurotic fibers थे यहाँ पर भी होंगे, free होंगे. What happens? These lower end, at the lower end, these aponeurotic fibers they get folded upon itself. Fold ऐसे नहीं होता है. Fold is not on the outside. Fold is on the inside. Okay. Between the pubic tubercle, between the pubic tubercle and the anterior superior iliac spine, the lower aponeurotic fiber of the external oblique, or you can say the lower fibers of external oblique aponeurosis, get folded upon itself. They are going to fold posteriorly. They are going to fold upon itself and to form a ligament that is called as the inguinal ligament. ठीक है? That is the inguinal ligament. Pubic tubercle gets in this aponeurosis. In this aponeurosis, there is a gap now. इसी एपोनिरोसिस के अंदर देर इज अ गैप एंड दैट इज कॉल्ड एज दी सुपरफिशियल इंगल रिंग ओके दैट इज अ गैप दैट इज कॉल्ड सुपरफिशियल इंगल रिंग ऊपर का ओरिजिन समझ में आ गया सबको एक्सटर्नल ऑब्लिक का यू नो वेयर इट इज फ्लैशी एंड वेयर आर दीज एपोनिरोटिक फाइबर्स प्रेजेंट ओके एट दी लोअर एंड इट इज गोइंग टू गेट अटैच दी एंटीरियर सुपीरियर एलिक पाइंट हेयर एंड दी प्यूबिक टूबर्कल एंड फोल्ड अपॉन इट सेल देखो अंदर इसका फोल्डिंग एंड दिख रहा है यस This is the inguinal ligament. Then there is one gap present in this aponeurosis, and that gap is called as the superficial inguinal ring. Okay, superficial inguinal ring. 
तो सुपरफिशियल इंक्वायरल रिंग इज प्रेजेंट अब एंड मीडियल टू दी प्यूबिक टूबरकल ये प्यूबिक टूबरकल इट इज गोइंग टू बी प्रेजेंट अब एंड मीडियल टू दी प्यूबिक टूबरकल ओके तो प्यूबिक टूबरकल यू कैन लोकेट उसके अब एंड मीडियली देर बी अर दैट इज कॉल्ड एज ए सुपरफिशियल इंक्वायनल रिंग क्लियर when you uh, when i have shown you this diagram you can appreciate this femoral artery and femoral vein coming down okay beneath this gap they are passing beneath this inguinal ligament tabhi jab to, you had uh, seen in the uh, lower leg these femoral artery and femoral vein we said always that they are going to come beneath the inguinal ligament over beneath the inguinal ligament over which fascia over fascia iliac a very good and anteriorly bounded by fascia transversalis so fascia transversalis ko hum yahan pe trace karenge okay okay then wait wait we are going to trace that fascia transversalis thing okay now this gap in the external oblique epineurosis we know okay this is the gap why this gap is required for us to pass so that some structures can pass into perineum through this through the abdominal cavity which two structures that is the spermatic cord in males and the round ligament of uterus in females okay spermatic cord or round ligament of uterus in females clear these structures because they are developing kaha posterior abdominal wall mein posterior abdominal wall mein these structures are developing and now they are going to descend down when they are descending down they have, they carry something else also along with them we are going to discuss that processus vaginalis abhi ke liye hum bolenge spermatic cord and round ligament of uterus they have to come out they are going to come out through superficial inguinal ring kahan pe located hai superficial inguinal ring Above and medial to the pubic tubercles. Very good. इसके साथ भी तहत talk about this ilioinguinal nerve. Ilioinguinal nerve again कहाँ से आ रही है? Posterior abdominal wall से आ रही है जहाँ पे lumbar plexus is present. Yes. And from that lumbar plexus, L1 segment से one nerve is coming. And that is the ilioinguinal nerve that is going to traverse pura inguinal canal. We'll discuss inguinal canal. But that is going to come out through the superficial inguinal ring. Okay. So if I ask you superficial inguinal ring से which all two structures pass, you have to tell us this. <coughs> then uh this abhi i'll not talk okay when these are these two crurals ab ye jo crura hai they will be one medial crura if this is superficial inguinal ring they will be one crura that is the medial crura and that is the lateral crura ye jo crura hai kaise banega where this medial crura is present and where this lateral crura is present if i ask you tell me boundary of this superficial inguinal ring You will say it is bounded on the lateral side by lateral crura of external oblique epineurosis. Yes, medial by medial crura of external uh, epineurosis. Superficially or uh, towards the uh, roof, it is rounded where these two fibers are uniting. Base where? Base where? Ha, base where? base is over the pubic crest base is over the pubic crest why right? because these fibers are going to come like this okay and i told you they are going to get attached here yahan pe attached to theek hai and the inguinal ligament is here and you can come through okay inguinal ligament is this And I told you, pubic stem fibers, okay? These fibers, external oblique fibers, are not going to get attached. Okay. Then this is going to stretch. This is going to stretch from this area to this area, so as to get attached to the pubic tuber. These epineurotic fibers are going to stretch from this area and then get attached to this pubic tuber. Us pubic tuber ke baad sab kuch khatti hai. So ye jo gap hai, this gap hai, is the superficial inguinal ring. So if I ask you, ye base kya hai superficial inguinal ring ka? Is this pubic crest? Okay, so we say superficial inguinal ring is bounded by medial and the lateral crura of external oblique epineurosis. Base is resting on the pubic crest. Is it medially kya hoga? Pubic stem fibers. Is it laterally kya hoga? Pubic tubercle. Okay, clear. That is pubic crest. Both of you clear ho jayega. Clear that side also? Yes. 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 Because this is required. When we are going to talk about the inguinal canal, this is important. This will again become important thing. external oblique epineurosis clear superficial fascia is being removed here we'll talk again to this 
as shown you will be to buckle there okay so i need not to show it here again this is the superficial inguinal rim a schematic diagram to show you this अब यहाँ पर यहाँ पर ये डायग्राम दिखाने का क्या मतलब है टू एक्सप्लेन यू दिस लिगमेंट दैट इज कॉल्ड एज दैकिनर लिगमेंट लैकिनर लिगमेंट अगेन इज अ मॉडिफिकेशन ऑफ व्हाट ऑफ इंगवानर लिगमेंट अगेन इज अ मॉडिफिकेशन ऑफ इंगवानर लिगमेंट सो दिस वाज़ दिस यस इंगवानर लिगमेंट देन ही सेड दिस इज अ पोफिशियल इंगवानर लिगमेंट यस नाउ यहाँ पर जो एक्सटर्नल ऑब्जेक्ट फाइबर � ठीक है 
over three events and their coastal cartilages which is going to take origin from and it is again take going to take origin from what? Iliac crest. Iliac crest mein kaha se? Intermediate segment. Thik hai? Intermediate segment. Again, different book says different things. Some book says ki pura, se, uh, pura jo ventral segment hai na, uska whole of the intermediate area se internal oblique origin hai. Some book says uska anterior two thirds se. But I think we should follow that it is going to take origin from the whole of the ventral segment, ka intermediate area. Yes? Intermediate area, pura ventral segment. Ventral segment, you, when I say ventral segment of iliac crest, you understand? Yes. Okay. And when it is going to take origin, how can you origin or that? Yeah, yes. Inguinal ligament. Okay, inguinal ligament. This is going to take origin from the lateral two thirds of the inguinal ligament. As a fold water. उस फोल्ड के लैटरल टू थर्ड से इट इज गोइंग टू टेक ओरिजिन ओके अब ओके आई गो टू दैट लेटर एंड इट इज गोइंग टू गेट इंसर्टेड अगेन इनटू द मिड लाइन सो अगेन दीस फाइबर्स आर गोइंग टू बी डायरेक्टेड अपवर्ड्स एंड बैकवर्ड्स एंड टू इंसर्ट ऑन टू द डीप पॉइंट प्रोसेस लीनिया अल्बा एंड द प्यूबिक सिंफाइसिस ओके एंड अगेन वी नो एट द लेवल ऑफ द लीनिया सेमीलोनारिस दीस फाइबर्स आर गोइंग टू बिकम एपोनीरोटिक फ्लैशी फाइबर सिर्फ लैटरल साइड में रहेंगे क्लियर यस यस कैन एनी वन ऑफ यू रिपीट दी इंटरनल पब्लिक का ओरिजिन फास्ट फास्ट एनी वन From the number plexus, they have to pierce this. Yes. Okay. So what they do? They pierce the epidermis of this muscle and then come onto the anterior side first to supply the anterior abdominal wall. These mass, these nerves generally lie between two layers. That is the internal oblique and transversal abdominis ka epidermis. How difficult to find the epidermis separate karna? When you are going to go to the section of the medulla, that is, the three epidermis ko separate karke aisi no you know they will. They are appreciated as a
ये इंटरनल लॉग लिख है और सिर्फ इतना होगा रेस्टी के लेटर वर्ष का लॉग लिख एंड इन वाले से ठीक है आगे एंटी लेटर लॉग लिख दिया सेमी वायरस इट इस गोइंग टू बिकम फ्लैट एंड गोइंग टू एंड दिस फाइबर्स आर गोइंग टू बी डायरेक्टेड हॉरिजॉन्टली एंड गेट इंसर्टेड ऑफ द डिफॉल्ट प्रोसेस लीन या अल्बा प्यूबिस फाइबर्स के यस टी टू दिस सिड ऑफ कौन जॉइंट ले लें डीप टू दिस क्या होगा इंटरनल एक्सटर्नल ऑब्लिक इंटरनल ऑब्लिक ट्रांसवर्सिस एब्डोमिनस देन देयर इज फेशिया ट्रांसवर्सलिस ओके एंड फेशिया ट्रांसवर्सलिस इज आल्सो हैविंग वन गैप दैट इज कॉल्ड एज डीप इंगुइनल रिंग ठीक है फेशिया ट्रांसवर्सलिस के भी अंदर एक गैप है दैट इज कॉल्ड एज डीप इंगुइनल रिंग और वो जो डीप इंगुइनल रिंग है वेयर इट विल बी प्रेजेंट इट विल बी प्रेजेंट एग्जैक्टली अबव द मिड इंगुइनल पॉइंट ओके मिड इंगुइनल पॉइंट मिड इंगुइनल पॉइंट कैसे बनेगा pubic symphysis and asis ka midpoint okay so 3 to 4 cm above that mid inguinal point there is a defect in the fascia transversalis that is the deep inguinal ring theek hai okay again we are going to talk of this conjoint tendon conjoint tendon is formed by the union of internal oblique and transversus abdominis ke fibers internal oblique and transversus abdominis ke fibers they are going to unite and they are going to form the conjoint tendon दिस इज इंटरनल ऑब्लिक आई टोल्ड कि एक्सटर्नल ऑब्लिक में तो यहां पर इस लेवल पर डिफेक्ट था यहां पर सुपरफिशियल इंग्वाइनल रिंग इसी लेवल पर था ये इफ दिस इज टू बर्थल दिस इज सिम फाइसिस यहां पर गैप होना चाहिए ये सुपरफिशियल इंग्वाइनल रिंग ओके उसके ऊपर वेन दीज फाइबर्स आर गोइंग टू काम एंड वी सेट कि दीज फाइबर्स ऑफ इंटरनल ऑब्लिक आर गोइंग टू ओरिजिनेट फ्रॉम दी लैटरल टू थर्ड ऑफ द इंग्वाइनल लिगमेंट ये वाला एरिया क्या है यहां पर तो कुछ भी नहीं है Because the internal oblique के जो फाइबर्स हैं, they're going to arch, they're going to arch over this gap in the superficial inguinal ring. क्योंकि superficial inguinal ring को को posteriorly they cannot cross ना, there has to be some space that has to be connected to the gap in the fascia transversalis. एक कैनाल जैसा बनेगा, ठीक है? तो ये जो internal oblique के फाइबर्स ने यहाँ से originate किया, that is the lateral two third of the inguinal ligament, and उसके बाद they had not taken any origin why because these lower fibers lower epineurotic fibers of internal oblique they are going to arch over the superficial inguinal ring and get inserted into the pubic symphysis arch karke pubic symphysis pe insert ho jate hain theek hai aise hi transverse abdominis transverse abdominis ka what happen lateral one third se originate karenge and then they are going to arch they form the arching fibers hum ye arching iska acha ye arching yahan par to thoda aur laterally hai यहाँ पे थोड़ा मीडियल ही है ऐसा क्यों ऐसा क्यों बिकॉज दिस इज एन ऑब्लिक कैनाल ये कैनाल ऑब्लिक है ऐसे आ रहा है ठीक है सो व्हेन दिस कैनाल इज कमिंग फ्रॉम द लैटरल साइड टू द मीडियल साइड दैट इज फ्रॉम द डीप इंग्वाइनल रिंग व्हिच इज लोकेटेड स्लाइटली लैटरली टू द सुपरफिशियल इंग्वाइनल रिंग विच इज प्रेजेंट मीडियली सो वी कैन से ये वाले फाइबर्स थोड़ा सा और मीडियल आ सकते हैं फ्लैशी फाइबर्स एज कम्पेयर टू द डीपर वन बिकॉज दे हैव टू क्रिएट अ स्पेस ये यस कितना यस सिर्फ एक ही यस है या और भी है इसको समझ नहीं आया एक्सटर्नल ऑब्लिक एपोनिरोसिस सी आएगा मेरा डायग्राम इन दिस एक्सटर्नल ऑब्लिक एपोनिरोसिस फोल्डेड अपॉन इट सेल्फ टू फॉर्म दिंग वन एलिगमेंट यस उसके बाद दीज फाइबर्स गॉट स्ट्रेच इन दिस एरिया सो एस टू फॉर्म दी सुपरफिशियल इंग्वाइनल रिंग दिस इज दी सुपरफिशियल इंग्वाइनल रिंग इसी तरह ठीक है ओके ना ये सुपरफिशियल इंग्वाइनल रिंग है उसके बाद इंटरनल ऑफ दी फाइबर्स आर गोइंग टू ओरिजिनेट अभी मैं क्रोमास्टिक की तो बात ही नहीं कर रही आई टॉक ऑफ क्रोमास्टिक मसल इन दी इंग्वाइनल लेगमेंट इंग्वाइनल कैनाल अब इंटरनल ऑफ दी का क्या इंटरनल ऑफ दी दीज इज देयर टू ओरिजिनेट फ्रॉम लैटरल टू थर्ड ठीक है ओरिजिनेट करके अब ये वाले फाइबर्स का जो लोअर एंड है यहां पे भी तो फाइबर्स होंगे इंटरनल ऑफ दी का एपोनिरोसिस होगा बट दैट इज फ्री ना Then, 
No, no. Okay. 
okay so now you understand the conjoint tendon and we have n number of ligaments around this area which are protecting that is the reflected part of the inguinal ligament pectineal ligament okay lateral ligament just to protect this area clear rectus abdominis then we'll come to rectus abdominis facial transversalis ka gap okay ek cheez aur bata dete hain facial transversalis mein there is a gap in this area deep to transversus abdominis we have talked about the transversus abdominis deep to transversus abdominis facial transversalis mein ek gap that is the deep inguinal ring that deep inguinal superficial inguinal ring ko protect karne ke liye conjoint tendon hai bahut sare ligaments superficial na ho kare deep ring ko protect karne ke liye kya hai hamare paas बताओ क्या है मिड इंग्वाइनल पॉइंट पर मिड इंग्वाइनल पॉइंट पर देयर विल बी दिस डिफेक्ट इन द फेशिया ट्रांसवर्सलिस एंड इंटरनल ओब्लिक एपोनियोटिक फाइबर्स दे आर गोइंग टू गेट इन ओरिजिन फ्रॉम द लैटरल टू थर्ड सो विल दे बी प्रोटेक्टेड विल दिस रिंग विल बी प्रोटेक्टेड एंटीरियरली बाय द फेशी फाइबर्स ऑफ इंटरनल ओब्लिक यस और नो and some part in the lateral side by the transversus abdominis so this ring is protected anteriorly by what internal oblique and transversus abdominis that is why that is why what is happening these internal oblique and transversus abdominis fibers they are taking origin from the reflected part of the inguinal ligament or reflected part of the external oblique aponeuros theek hai right because then this space again is protected so any space if it is being created physiologically present it has to be protected so it has been protected in this case by these two muscles which are present anteriorly okay coming on to the rectus abdominis rectus abdominis has two heads and we have already discussed that this muscle is present in segments this muscle is present in certain segments and these in between these fleshy fibers there are these tendinous intersections present that's why who are uh, those who are doing exercises making their abs what they are doing they are working on these muscle fibers so these muscle fibers bulge out and these tendinous intersections obviously they are not going to bulge out so they remain at place and one can easily make out these as abs okay so okay now origin origin kahan se hoga origin this is a midline muscle so should be present in between this uh, linea semilunaris and this linea alba linea semilunaris ka origin insertion kahan pe hoga if i ask you to do the surface marking yes uh, yes linea semilunaris ka origin and insertion hoti kahan hai please 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 no talk nothing yes lateral muscles lateral anterior abdominal wall muscle and medial abdominal wall muscle ke beech mein there is a space visible okay superficially visible that is called as linea semilunaris but in obese we will not be able to make out na then should, we should have some certain landmark surface landmark so can you tell me those surface landmarks it's a difficult thing um transverse fascia nahi bache लैटरली क्या टिप ऑफ नाइन कॉस्ट काटे ले जाते को ना इलाइन को यहीं से ट्रेस करना है बच्चे इसीलिए ना स्केलेटिन को अच्छे से मेमोराइज कर ठीक है तो इट इज गोइंग टू बी ट्रेस फ्रॉम द टिप ऑफ द नाइन कॉस्ट कार्टिलेज टू दिस व्हाट इज दिस ये क्या है प्यूबिक ट्यूबर का ओके दिस इज द लीनियर सेमीलिनर सिर्फ ओके ओरिजिन ओरिजिन इज गोइंग टू बी फ्रॉम दिस प्लेस क्या होगा यहां पे प्यूबिक ट्यूबर के के मिडलाइन में प्यूबिक ट्यूबर के मीडियन में Cubic symphysis, body of cubic symphysis. So it is going to take origin from the anterior surface of the body of cubic symphysis. One head, that is the superficial head. Deep head is going to take origin from the pubic crest. Cubic symphysis, anterior surface. Body of cubic symphysis, the anterior surface. One head, second head from the pubic crest. These two heads are going to go above and get inserted onto what? Can't insert it. Costly cartilage. And the Z point process. Okay, it is going to get inserted onto the lower six costal cartilages and their ribs and their and the Z point process. So, this linea, this okay, rectus abdominis, yes. And and this is again important. The rectus abdominis due to tendinous intersections. Right? They are generally seen at the level of Z point process. Okay, 
at the level of umbilical is half way between the recoil process and the umbilical. So, you can just intersection of any value, other than abnormally dikra, so that is some abnormality. Okay, thoda upar niche hoga, obviously not exactly at the level of umbilical, but haan, around. Okay. Now, rect is abdominus clear hoga? Yes, but when we see anterior abdominal wall in the picture, we are not able to see that muscle. We are only able to see few fleshy fibers coming from the lateral side. That is the external object. Okay, why this is not seen? Because this muscle is being covered by rectus sheath. That rectus sheath is being formed by external oblique, internal oblique, transverse abdominis ka aponeurosis. But, uh, okay, uske piche, uske piche will be the fascia transverse. So, fascia transverse alis, you know that it is uh, going to lie in the, koi bhi isko pad, pad do kade hokar. Any one of you stand up. Any one of you, if I give you answer sheets and ask any, uh, question papers for the profs and ask any one of you stand up and pick up. All of you will stand up. So, this ke liye bhi please kari lo, voluntary stand up. Why should I, I always have to call the roll numbers? Aajo, koi bhi, koi bhi. Isko, ye to shuwa to done na? No, okay. I can make out few faces. I mean, I have a lot of people in classes, but I can make out the faces who want to study. So, if I have some extra class, I can pick out those people, those students. You all can come. The class will become interesting. If you all will be absent, class will not be interested. So, everyone has to show the interest. Let's go, kids. Facial transverse alice. Lines the inner surface of transverse muscle and forms endo-abdominal fascia. Continuous with other fascia. Attached to inner lip of iliac crest, post margin of inguinal ligament, pectin pubis, pubic crest, behind conjoint tendon. Presents an oval gap, 1.25 cm above, meeting vital point, deep in vital ring. Thanks, Amma Jaya. Last one. Deep in vital ring. Okay, actually they are talking of facial transverse alice, na? Facial transverse alice kahaan se hai? So they are saying ki, jo transverse muscle hai, uske upar ka facial, that is facial transverse alice and that facial transverse alice is going to present a gap over the deep inguinal ring, 1.25 to 2 centimeters above. Some books say it's 3 centimeters also, 2 to 4 centimeters also. Kya diya hua hai? Vishant Singh mein 2 to 4 centimeters diya hua hai? Graze mein 3 centimeters diya hua hai. ठीक है 1.25 सेंटी टू इंचेस एंड दे हैव गिवन अप्रॉक्सिमेटली थ्री सेंटीमीटर्स ठीक है सो वील फॉलो दैट ओके सो दिस इज गोइंग टू अब सबसे इनर है सबसे इनर है ओके सो देर इट इज गोइंग टू गेट अटैच ऑब्वियसली ऑन टू द इनर मोस्ट लिप ऑफ द आईलिए क्रेस यस अलोंग विद द अलोंग विद व्हाट मसल ट्रांसवर्सेस एब्डोमिनस देन इट इज गोइंग टू गेट अटैच टू द पोस्टीरियर मार्जिन ऑफ द इंगुइनल लिगामेंट एंड देन इट पेक्टिन प्यूबिस एवरीवन नोस पेक्टिन प्यूबिस प्यूबिक क्रेस एंड बिहाइंड दी conjoint ligament. Obviously, when we say pubic crest, pectin pubis, pubic crest, it becomes the area of the conjoint tendon only. Clear? So, this is the fascia transverse alice. Now, we will talk of the rectus sheath. Rectus sheath, we are going to say that this is present, it is divided. This is different at different levels. Okay, above the costal margin, Rectus sheath above the costal margin, it is different. यहाँ पर भी rectus muscle है. Yes, between the costal margin and the line passing through the anterior superior iliac spines. Okay, and the line at the level of anterior superior iliac spines. यहाँ पर rectus sheath is different. Formation of rectus sheath is different. Below this, formation of rectus sheath is different. Okay. Okay. Above this. Above the costal margins, okay. Above the costal margin, if I say costal margin, lowest lowest point of the thoracic case, उसके ऊपर anterior wall of the rectus sheath is formed by the external oblique aponeurosis. Okay, it is formed by the external oblique का aponeurosis. This is the external oblique. ये external oblique का aponeurosis forming the anterior sheath. This is internal oblique. This is transverse abdominis. This is transverse alveolus fascia. This is parietal peritoneum. They are all lying posteriorly. Yes, above the, above the costal margin. Okay, and there, uh, uh, we need this. Okay, we need this. 
and then in in between the costal margin and the line joining the two anterior superior artery spines, what happened? Internal oblique aponeurosis splits into two. Okay, it is going to. Yahan par aur thoda sa hai. Jana wait. Let me go to this. First this. Okay. Now external. This is superficial fascia. Skin superficial fascia. Then pectoralis major. We are not concerned with this. We should be knowing that this is the rectus muscle. Okay, this is the rectus muscle, this brown color, and the aponeurosis of the external oblique is forming the anterior wall. So anteriorly, rectus sheet is formed by the aponeurosis of external oblique. Its immediate posterior is present. What is these costal cartilages? Okay, they were saying that both can each have fascia transversalis and everything. Why? Because this muscle is going to get attached to the ribs. Okay, so now aponeurosis is present superficially and it is resting on what? It is resting on the fifth, sixth, and seventh costal cartilage. Posteriorly, costal margin के ऊपर की बात करें, ठीक है? Costal margin के ऊपर, तो posteriorly rectus sheet में क्या-क्या होगा? Costal cartilage होगे, जो भी concerned रहते हैं. Concerned रहते हैं fifth, sixth, seventh. और anterior wall किससे बनी थी? External wall के aponeurosis. In the area between Okay, that is the costal margin and the line joining the anterior superior artery spine. Internal oblique hypotenuse is going to split into two. So, anterior wall will be formed by the external oblique hypotenuse and the anterior layer of the internal oblique hypotenuse. I am hindering your view, yes? Okay, I will see a little bit of work. Okay, now, posterior lamina of the internal oblique hypotenuse is going to go posteriorly. And the transverse abdominis hyponeurosis is going to be like posteriorly. Now, here we will not say about the costal cartilages. We will directly go on to what? We will directly go on to the fascia transversalis. Okay, what was there? There we have talked about the muscle, that is the rectus muscle. Because the rectus muscle is directly 5, 6, 7 costal cartilages were going to be inserted on the pubic symphysis origin and then had gone to the costal cartilage. बस वहाँ पर क्या था जो external oblique का aponeurosis है that has gone anteriorly to form that rectus sheet उसके and इसी से beneath that will be the costal cartilages and उसके beneath if we are going to talk we are going to talk of after the intercostal muscles we are going to talk of the internal oblique and transverse abdominis but that internal oblique and transverse abdominis का जो aponeurosis है इस level तक पहुँचता ही नहीं है वहाँ तक पहुँचता ही नहीं है इसीलिए वो देखे दे दो नॉट लेबल इट ठीक है तुम्हें लगेगा यहाँ तो लेबल किया ही नहीं है तो इसीलिए दे हैड नॉट लेबल इट आई थॉट इसमें एक्सप्लेनेशन करना इजी रहेगा इसमें क्या है वी हैव दी अपनी रोशन ऑफ इंटरनल ऑब्लिक एंड दी ट्रांसफर्स ऑफ डोमिनेस एंड � External oblique aponeurosis and anterior lamina of the internal oblique aponeurosis anteriorly and posteriorly it is formed by the posterior lamina of the internal oblique aponeurosis and the aponeurosis of transverse abdominis. उसके बाद वो सारी layers जो हमने abdomen की याद की हैं fascia transverse आलेस है extra peritoneal tissue है and then the parietal peritoneum. Okay. Then below the line joining these two anterior superior iliac spine, what happened? The aponeurosis of all these three muscles form the anterior boundary of the or anterior wall of the rectus sheath. जब ये तीनों की तीनों muscles का aponeurosis coming anteriorly, so there will be no muscle. There will be सीधा fascia. Okay. When you are going to cut, Sonia, when you are going to cut the anterior abdominal wall downstairs, show them this acute line. बहुत अच्छे से दिखता है. कि सारी मसल्स हैव गोन एंटीरियर टू दी रेक्टस शीट तो व्हेन यू आर गोइंग टू रिमूव दी एंटीरियर डोमिनल वॉल यू कैन एप्रिशिएट दिस डिफेक्ट और दिस गैप ओके दिस गैप एंड यू कैन डायरेक्टली सी यहाँ पे एक फेशिया पड़ा हुआ है और सारी मसल्स हैव गोन एंटीरियरली एंड दिस कैन बी एप्रिशिएटेड अब now what has happened? They have all gone anteriorly. So what happens here? After that, you can appreciate some gap posteriorly. Yes, on the fascia, that gap will be visible. It will be very good to see. That is called as the arcuate line. Clear? So now the rectus sheath formation is different in different areas of the abdominal wall, and you should be able to tell us this thing. Okay? Correlate it. Why costal cartilages are different above the costal margin in the rectus sheath? And why not below it? Yes? Yes? Oh. 